Today's video is gonna help you train better for the pole vault. Welcome to the Pole Vault Vlog. My name is Sean Francis, and today we're gonna to talk everything pole vault training. Let's get at it. So our bodies are like fleshy vehicles to keep us alive and help us reproduce. Now teaching you how to reproduce is a whole nother video entirely. One that sounds hilarious to make, but I'll probably get in trouble. <laughs> So instead we're gonna talk about manipulating how the body adapts to keep us alive to help us pole vault higher. All training really is is creating an adaptation. Creating an adaptation within your body or your body going, hey, we need to adapt or we're gonna die. Here's a pretty good example. So last week you saw your own death play out in a nightmare involving an elevator. Therefore you vowed to never ever use an elevator ever again. Which is extremely unfortunate because you live on the top level of the Empire State Building. So you show up to work at the bottom of the Empire State Building and you have to climb 1,576 steps. And it took you 25 minutes to do that. You're sweating through your shirt, breathing heavy, legs are shaking, and you threw up in the trash can. This also made you extremely late for work and you got yelled at by your boss. But in your eyes, you'd rather get yelled at by your boss than die in an elevator. So the next day, you and your sore body show up to work a little bit earlier. You climb up all those steps again, and you throw up again. Hey, at least the boss is off your back. And your body's thinking, this guy's freaking losing it, man. If we keep up at this rate, we're gonna break down and we're gonna die. We're not gonna exist anymore and we're gonna break down and we're gonna get hurt and die. So you keep climbing those stairs every day to avoid an elevator death. And over time, the body makes its legs stronger to be able to handle those stairs. It also improves its ability to utilize oxygen so you're not breathing so heavy, sweating through your shirt. It strengthens the heart, and before you know it, you're not puking in the trash can anymore. Climbing these stairs used to take 25 minutes, and now only takes 15. And you're not even breaking a sweat. Your body adapted to help you stay alive. That's how training works. Now, if your body didn't adapt, what would end up happening is you would just be getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker until you either stopped the activity that's making you weaker or, or broke down and died. So, how do we use this human adaptation in training? Training adaptations. All training is, is using that adaptation response to adapt the body to the stress that we place on it. For example, the Eiffel Tower, the stress was walking up all those stairs. We put a stress on the body, the body adapted to it. So you gotta ask yourself, how do you wanna adapt? In the book, there's this awesome chart. If you wanna run faster, you just need to run faster. If you wanna run longer distances, you need to just run longer distances. Jump higher, you need to jump higher. Play guitar faster, you need to play guitar faster. The body is awesome and will adapt to just about any stress you place on it. All the examples I just gave you are the slow way of doing this. It will adapt, it will just be slower. What we have on our side is science. In order to optimize the speed of the adaptation, that's where the science comes in. As I said earlier, if we want to run faster, we could just run faster. Eventually, we will get faster. But when we can break down what goes into running fast, we can optimize that adaptation. What are a few things that help us run fast? Strength, force production, technique, or just to name a few. And because we know that, we can assign the best stimulus or stress to create the adaptation that we want. For force production, maybe we add some kind of plyometric exercises. For strength, we add specific weight room exercises to help us add strength to the muscles that help us run fast. For technique, we have a coach that puts the athlete in the optimal body positions for speed. Or you can run the body in different ways. That's where you might add overspeed drills, accelerations, or different types of skips. What you have to be asking all the time is what is the adaptation we want to create and what stress can I put on the body to create that adaptation? I really hope that was helpful. If you want to see the rest of the video, head over to team-shoot.com as this is from chapter 11 of my pole vault toolbox pole vault course. I know it can be overwhelming and if you're thinking, this is just too much work, I wish I just had a training program. We have those too. <laughs> Either way, you're going to be a better pole vaulter or a coach while supporting what I'm doing. But that said, remember, there is more than one way to pole vault and I will see you guys next week. Just a reminder, there's only three more weeks to pre-order the Pole Vault shirts.